Hey guys and welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Today we'll be making our way to the Fire Sanctuary where we can find another Locomo who will hopefully be able to open the way to the Mountain Temple which is uh, pretty lit but then again so is pretty much everything in this region so uh, <laughs> ah. a bit redundant to say so really. Uh, do you remember what kind of uh, trials and tribulations we'll be facing on our way to the Locomo mate? I know we're gonna deal with some pots, there's some whip puzzles, like we said, Spirit Tracks is a pretty good game in terms of like building up uh, on previous parts of the game and using new items along the way so no item ever gets really old so the whip is super useful in the this whole fire trial sanctuary area so yeah, yeah how about it? <laughs> well I was actually referring more to like the fire keys and we'll be uh, fighting a new enemy called a fire barber I think we may have already seen them it's been like a couple of weeks since we last recorded we do these sparingly but um yeah I would recommend having the whip out at all times to deal with keys boomerang works just as well have bombs at all times for the fire barbers. They can be immensely annoying to deal with otherwise. Basically, if you've played The World Ends with you before, use the boomerang. If you haven't, use the whip. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, how's that switch fund of yours coming along, mate? Is the hype driving you to save those pennies to get that new port and whatnot? Dude, the switch fund grows fatter each day until it becomes too powerful to contain. Oh, Jesus. I just imagined your wallet exploding and then a switch dropping through your roof. No, it's just, what happens is that the wallet explodes into a switch. Huh. Okay, I think that breaks a few uh, of the rules set out by the Ministry of Magic and Transfiguration, but uh, uh, this is Zelda, not Harry Potter. What are you going to do? Oh, I thought that was just like the natural switch life cycle. You know, it starts off as a wallet embryo and then it develops <laughs> and poof, pops out and a switch from the larval stage. God oh my, the shit we have to come up with to like kill time and whatnot. But yeah, you can just throw the bombs directly into the Deku barbers. Or sorry, the fire barbers. They're the same thing, except they're like spit fire. It's all the same thing, dude. <laughs> Plus, bombs are really good since they are equal to 12 damage, so that's basically your highest damaging item right now. The spin attack only does 8, and the normal sword slash does 4. So, there you go. Use bombs. Gets 3 sword slashes in 1. I just remember that doing a jump attack is more preferable than, you know, just a random horizontal slash and whatnot. So, uh, whenever you get the chance, do the jumping slash. It makes you feel like a man. I mean, Ocarina of Time did a pretty good job of conditioning me to love jump slashes and their higher damage output. But I feel like Spear Tracks with the combo works pretty well. You know, you use your jump attack to get in and close the distance, just because movement is a little weird with the whole DS controls. But you know, you jump into the enemy and then you just start slashing like a madman and hopefully maybe you roll away in time. I have so many of these white pearl loops. I really should go back to uh, <laughs> Jack Sparrow the Third and sell these things, or at least try and get like a new compartment for my train. But maybe that'll be like an end game thing, much like getting the engineer's outfit. Yay, more stamps! Oh, that one's just similar to the other one. Or is this one that we've already got? Never mind. I do like how they throw the babas in. It's nice. Yeah, they kind of look like rats from above. Uh, they kind of act like rats as well, just being annoying and getting your, in your way. Except with fireballs. Eh, whatever, I suppose. Alright, puzzle time. Opening the door of friendship. A dramatic reading by Entom. Once upon a time, two men fell in love with a beautiful woman. One man was popular and always the centre of the attention. He was the Chad. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, the woman only had eyes for the other man, who we shall refer to here as the Virgin. The battle for the woman's love grew hot and set sparks hot enough to melt stone, but eventually the Chad and the Virgin became friends, and thus a light was created between the two, and the door of friendship had been unlocked. See, I much prefer the other version that goes, One, two, Princess Neil before you. Just go ahead now. As quoted by the Great Spin Doctors, it's basically the same shit. Remind me who they are, because, um... Actually, I think you'll just have to tell me in general, because I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about. 
they're just a 90s band that had one famous song, and that famous song happened to get them on Sesame Street. Huh. And now it's just one of those 90s songs that no one really cares about unless you're looking to get that 90s nostalgia fix. Yeah, or get some 90s cred by remembering Sesame Street, I suppose. By the way, I remember Sesame Street, so if you're not already subscribed, maybe do. My opinion is obviously better than those who don't remember Sesame Street. See, that kind of weirds me out, like, Sesame Street was so integral to my childhood, I forgot, it's like, it wasn't on in every country, not every child grew up with it, and that makes me sad for the world. Yes, yes, the world needs more learning. This is Ambrose, I love this guy, he's super confident, and this right here is just, it's a lesson you should take to your heart, just listen to what he says here. You should be confident and courageous in every word you speak. Oh. Like, that, is that like some true saying gospel or something? <sighs> I guess so, yeah. He is a little bit like a saying. He looks like Vegeta's dad a little bit. Don't they all look like Vegeta's dad? Don't they like just all look the same though? Oh no, Freeze is going to destroy Vegeta. Do you mean the planet, my son, or me? Um, yes. Pew, friggin' smartass. Yes? <laughs> Alright, it's jam time. You guys know how this goes by now. We do a little practice ditty, and then we get into the real dope. And then we get to the part where we sign a deal with the devil, and then we gotta play against the devil to banish him back to hell? But it's okay, because we st we're still the rock guitar hero man god. Why has no one created a Tenacious D adventure game? Do you know how hype... That would be, like, going about as, like, the two, finding items, and having jam sessions like this, but better, because it would be modeled after Guitar Hero. So, no joke, I literally thought Brutal Legends was going to be that. Um, so I had played Psychonauts, and I was super obsessed with it, and so when I saw Brutal Legends was coming out, I didn't do the research into what genre the game would actually be. I just kind of liked the trailers and, like, the aesthetic, and really thought it was going to be, like, you know, this Jack Black heavy metal just adventure game and then i find out it's fucking starcraft yeah and you know oh, I'm so kind of being a dead horse at this point but it would have been better without the rts things no disrespect to uh, tim schafer it was his choice and i do like what was there beyond the rts stuff mostly because i'm not very good at real-time strategy but um they had the makings of greatness did brutal legend and i enjoyed it for what it was so no like i enjoyed it i played through the whole game in one night i just Really dumb me. I got really far into the game with this idea in my head. It's like, when does when do we get to the real game? I don't know why. Like, I got really fucking far into the game and still kept thinking it was gonna change for some reason. Oh, bless you. I, I'd like to point out for the record, by the way. I swear I missed a purple note back there, and Ambrose caught it, but he was too into the hype of the jam that he just let it pass. It's like a little wobble effect. They're close enough, and your bandmates will just cover you there with their bitchin' timpanies. Oh, Oh, is that what he's using? Yeah, that's what those are. See, I actually know that instrument. It took me... I had to actually look up what the guitar one looking was, but no. I know what a timpani is. Nice. That was a very maze looking set of spirit tracks that appeared around the mountain temple, so uh, I think we have a minigame shenanigan on our hands before we can get into that, boys. I think we have more Zelda Patty because we can't just get straight to the dungeon. Oh no, no my dears, that's not how this works. <laughs> this isn't Breath of the Wild where you can just go to the Rito village and be in the temple in like 10 minutes. This isn't Zelda 1, you can't just go to any dungeon you want, it's not how it works. Yeah, let's just say since finishing Zelda 1, I have had no desire to go back to Zelda 1. I think I'd much rather play Zelda 2 at this point in time. Oh no, we've killed the hype for the second quest playthrough. It's dead, kids. <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah. Cross it off your hype list. Yeah, I kind of fucked myself in the arse in regards to Let's Plays there. Um, please don't unsubscribe. Look forward to that. I don't think the Zelda 1 redo will happen this year, because we have this, and uh, I guess the other two Zelda things we'll do this year are Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild in that order, just to show you, like... I would say the most casualized 3D Zelda, quote unquote, I'm not calling it a bad game, I'm just calling it the most handholdy, which it is, and then the least handholdy. I think it'll be a really interesting contrast, actually. Honestly, yeah, that's probably the best we could do is just put those two games together and see. Because, yeah, I feel 
like throughout our Zelda playthroughs, I feel like I've kind of put my opinion out there that I am opposed to the whole handholdy thingy that started with basically Zelda 2 Link's Awakening type deal. And then that sort of carried over into 3D Zelda design and how I really wish we could just go back to maybe that Zelda 1 thing. And then Breath of the Wild appeared and then everyone was winking and nudging me. It's like, yep, I called it. <laughs> oh, man. I remember the uh, original trailer for that where Link's just chilling on Hyrule Field and then the friggin' like, Guardian comes along and it's like, oh, the game won't look that good. And the game ended up looking pretty much that good with a few frame rate dips here and there, you know, they're not perfect. Then it just ended up, oh, wait, that is the game. I know I was super hyped when I saw Electro Arrows. That That's what really got me hooked onto the whole Breath of the Wild aesthetic. Like, before we even knew too much, like, well, it's got Electro Arrows, so that's hype as fuck. Yeah, gotta correct you there. They're actually called Ancient Arrows. There are Lightning Arrows in the game, Shock Arrows, and the, they actually do really help in certain situations. Like, you'd think the Elemental Arrows would just be there to help you kill guys faster. No, there's a lot of times when they're pretty much a necessity. That's good. It's... I like that they've taken basically a complaint that's always been in Zelda. It's like, why even get the ice arrows? Why even get these other arrows? Uh, make them more useful. I mean, they were pretty useful in Wind Waker 2, but they were like plot useful more than combat useful. And then basically, once you got the light arrows, why even shoot? Don't. Why even allow anything else to touch your bow at that point? Very much so. Get out of my bow, you dirty, dirty arrow. All right, we've got to go up the mountain, getting free keys along the way. No, not the bat, the thing that allows you to open doors. And in order to get these keys, we have to chase the little flying pigs that we've seen about and give them a little tootaloot on our train flute, and they'll get scared and they'll drop the thing, like the idiots they are. Wow. Who even let the flying pigs get the keys? <laughs> like... I know. So silly. This game is, is sometimes just so quirky and so fun at times, but goddamn. <laughs> Some of the ideas. Yep. Oh, I see. I, I killed your mother. Now the babies want revenge. I mean, that's usually the case when you kill the mother of evil beings. Well, they can't do anything now. Th that's how, kind of how like the original great epic starts. Like, yo, I, I messed up the monster mom. Now the monster babies are coming after me. Oh, man. The Link must be in a never-ending cycle of revenge. Like, every single Moblin, every single Bokoblin, every single Deku Scrub is constantly on his ass. I'm surprised every town he visits doesn't get ransacked thinking he's there. Shh, Tom, we can't ruin the plot of Skyward Sword before we've even done the playthrough. We'll get to that. <laughs> uh, I, I've done enough shitting on Skyward Sword today, so let's talk exclusively about this section. How did you fare the first time around? Did you get a bit confused with uh, the gimmick and the layout of this place? Just a bit, just because there are a lot of things going on here. Uh, but it can be taken care of quite easily. You know, it's a little confusing. Like, he's still there, he's still alive. Do you do we need to kill him? Do we have to wait? What's up? Like, the game kinda It's a change of pace. I think it's quite fun, honestly, because like there's no time limit here as far as I'm aware. You just have to chase these guys down. Which admittedly, if you don't like the train system in general, can get a bit annoying, but uh, you're like told well in advance which way they're turning. They're like lesser dangerous dark trains, really. And by this point, if you don't like the train mechanic, you've probably stopped playing the game. Like, people who have gotten to this point in the game are quite familiar with how to toot a loot, as it were. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's over there. He's ready for us. There he is. Did you know that there's actually a glitch with the uh, directional switches too? Oh yeah. It's completely useless, but... There is a way that you can switch the directions on the track at the very last second and the game will think you're going down the other track, but you've actually, you know, you just stay on your current course. There is currently no use for this glitch, so, you know, it's just kind of one of those things to fuck with the game. Interesting. I do like fucking with games, but uh, knowing me, I'd, like, fail to pull it off correctly and go careening right into the path of a dark drone. You managed to actually get the train to fall off the tracks. Like, I don't even think Zelda, I don't think Nintendo intended any of this. 
I am kind of disappointed that uh, the spirit train at no point in the game does actually fly. Because that would be pretty hype, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty disappointed that at no point does the spirit train train drift and go on two tracks at the same time. Oh, oh, massacre! Multi-track drifting! It's the only way to solve your ethical conundrums. <laughs> I don't want to exactly call it an ethical conundrum, unless not having enough fun is an ethical conundrum for you. Well, no, you never seen the uh, the train memes where it's like, do you flip the switch to kill the one person or let the train run over the five people and then one person made the solution be just multi-track drifting. He's like, just get rid of all of them. <laughs> yeah, and then there's that one gif of like the kid who's presented that problem and he just puts them all on like the same track and runs them over. <laughs> yeah, they did it with like a bunch of toys. Like, how do you solve the puzzle, Jimmy? And he's like, puts them all on the same track and just runs them all through. He's like, yep, that's how you raise a sociopath, dude. That's how it happens. Yeah, right that's a, that's a future Charles Manson in the making right there. Be gone, elephant rabbit thing. We have all the keys now. So let's make a beeline to the entrance of the mountain temple because uh, I think these things will be coming right for us now. What an odd choice for the Zelda team to get their enemy inspirations from Winnie the Pooh, because I swear to god, these elephant thingies are heffalumps. Where's the woozles? Are they like gonna be at a boss in a later temple or something? I'm, I'm pretty sure like the Miniblins are meant to be like the woozles, or maybe they're in a later dungeon. Who knows? Who we even cares, really? We have to watching this playthrough to find out! <laughs> yeah, just watch it anyway, especially with ad block off, because mm -mm, if I don't love ad revenue. Oh, one of them is chasing us. I think all of them are chasing us. Oh my god, it's a gag attack. Ah! The Heffalumps attack. Gang war is over. Forever. Alright guys, we've made it to the Mountain Temple. Please join us next time when we take on this beast and best it as only HFC can.